Congress is holding its first hearing on UFOs in more than 50 years. This object you see here was caught on camera flying past the SpaceX rocket just minutes after liftoff last week. Unidentified aerial phenomenon. If it's unidentified, you don't know what it is. The ISS is enthusiastically supported by many people who are interested in space travel for its own sake and by those scientists who hope to fly their own experiments on the platform. However, it has long been highly condemned by a majority of the scientific community for providing insufficient science for the money, effectively diverting funds away from more successful research. Some scientists argued that the majority of the ISS study focus on technical rather than fundamental concerns. However, one of the controversies has nothing to do with science at all, and that is the claim that it is frequently visited by flying objects that cannot be identified. Why would UFOs visit the International Space Station? Is something horrible about to happen? And why is NASA covering it up? Join us as we delve into how NASA has recently detected something enormous docked on the International Space Station and is attempting to conceal it from the public. The International Space Station orbits the Earth at a height of approximately 250 miles. It can orbit the Earth every 90 minutes due to its top speed of 17,500 miles per hour. Using the space station, NASA is learning more about living and functioning in space. These discoveries will enable mankind to travel further into space than ever before. It can house a team of six people as well as visitors. As measured from the borders of its solar array, the station spans the area of a football field, including the end zones. The ISS includes laboratory modules from the United States, Russia, Japan and Europe. Aside from the laboratories where astronauts perform scientific research, the space station features several additional components. The first Russian modules comprise the fundamental systems needed to run the space station, as well as living quarters for the crew. Outside the space station are robotic arms that helped build the space station. These arms can also be used to move astronauts during spacewalks or scientific research. Spacewalks are possible through open airlocks and other spacecraft can attach to the station via docking ports. Ports are where cruisers dock and visitors arrive. And in recent times, it's the ports that have become the focus of interest due to bizarre occurrences at the International Space Station. The ports have welcomed something far more intriguing than new crews and human guests. However, there is another set of components that draw people to the ISS, the cameras. The ISS includes four cameras that allow the public to observe events on the space station. SpaceX flew four high-definition video cameras called HDEV or High Definition Earth Viewing Cameras to the International Space Station as part of the CRS-3 mission in April 2014. These cameras were installed within a protective box on the Columbus Lab on the International Space Station, the European Space Agency's huge chrome module, which was joined to the space station in 2008. The four cameras are known as the Columbus Eye and a live streaming website is maintained by the University of Bonn in Germany. One video camera is directed forward, two are pointed backward, the wake and one is pointed downward, the nadir. They are linked to the computer on the space station through an Ethernet cable and beamed down to Earth. Surprisingly, the cameras serve numerous purposes. In addition to broadcasting footage to Earth, NASA utilizes them to monitor the rate of image degradation caused by cosmic radiation, as well as the durability of the camera casing while exposed to those rays. The cameras are housed in a pressurized and temperature controlled container and their performance may assist NASA engineers determine which cameras to utilize on future missions. However, the space agency has been accused of intentionally turning off these cameras during live streaming when they communicate information that the agency does not want you to view. NASA is in a unique position to cite odd objects that are not of Earth's origin because of its position and capacity as a space organization. However, it is believed that the agency filters what it releases to the wider public. Take, for instance, a recent skirmish that has led UFO enthusiasts to suspect NASA of engaging in some form of manipulation. A video footage shows an object entering the Earth's atmosphere during a live broadcast before NASA's live feed from the International Space Station abruptly shuts off. The footage shows a glowing object descending toward Earth before the transmission mysteriously cuts. However, no matter what NASA wants to achieve, this approach will not stop the flow of knowledge on one of the most contentious subjects ever. 
In fact, it appears to increase interest in UFOs because people want to know what authorities are trying to hide from them. One UFO hunter, for example, claims to have seen 10 UFOs during NASA's live feed from the International Space Station. A man identified only as Jeff made the observations. He noticed 10 mysterious objects circling around the ISS while watching NASA's live stream. Jeff sent a screenshot of the visual when the ISS flew over the South Atlantic. Jeff shared this screenshot with a YouTuber named Michael, who describes himself as a full-time Earth watchman or someone who monitors changes on and near Earth in an attempt to uncover hidden causes for various phenomena. Since then, the screenshots have gone viral, with hundreds of thousands of views. This experience is reminiscent of the renowned Mantle incident, which impacted the UFO debate for many years. It also had all the characteristics of a government cover-up. A cover-up was easier to pull back then, since the flow of information was much easier to control. Thomas F. Mantle was an Air Force captain with extensive flight experience. At the time of the accident, Mantle had logged a total of 2,867 hours in the cockpit, indicating that he was by no means an inexperienced pilot. The story began in 1948, when reports of a UFO arrived at Godman Air Force Base in Kentucky from neighboring Fort Knox. The object had just been spotted by Sergeant Quinton Blackwell, the Godman Controlled Towers principal operator. He later recalled that it resembled an ice cream cone with a red topping. Captain Gary Carter, the operations officer, was summoned by the tower crew and pointed out the object. Colonel Guy Hicks, the commanding officer, was then contacted by Carter. On their route from Marietta AFB to Standerford AFB, four F-51D fighter planes approached Godman and the Godman Tower requested the flight led by Captain Mantle to inspect the object. Mantle agreed and started climbing, accompanied by two other Mustangs, the fourth of which ran out of fuel and went on to Standerford. Mantle reported that the object is just ahead of me and above me at 14,000 feet, moving at about half my speed. Two of the Mustangs gave up the chase because their oxygen tanks were running low, but Mantle pursued. And then about an hour later, part of the tower crew heard Mantle say, it appears to be a metallic object or possible sun reflections from a metallic object and it's enormous in size. I'm still climbing. The object is above and ahead of me moving at my or faster speed. I'm attempting to close for a better look. Additional transmissions from the pilot were jumbled and contact was lost shortly afterwards. The Godman Tower too had lost sight of the UFO. That was the last they heard from Mantle. Whatever other information he may have provided regarding the UFO is now irretrievably lost. There have been numerous attempts to explain away the Mantle incident, such as assertions that the object Mantle observed was the planet Venus. While Venus is commonly misinterpreted as a UFO, it appears that this is not the case in this instance. Another notion proposed that the object was a standard weather balloon, although based on Mantle's description, a standard weather balloon looks to be far too small. Mantle, on the other hand, was too seasoned to be confused about whether he was staring at a planet or a weather balloon. Another hypothesis was that the object was a sun dog, which is a type of optical illusion. Sun dogs, also known as perihelion, are created by the reflection of sunlight off ice crystals high in the sky. They can appear like a huge luminous object. This theory, however, does not hold water because the object was observed from multiple angles and a sun dog is dependent on the observer, the ice and the sun being in certain locations relative to one another. Nonetheless, the attention the Mantle incident drew was enough to get the government engaged and Project Blue Book was formed soon after to persuade the public that flying objects could be explained. Following several UFO sightings during the Cold War, the Air Force developed the Project Blue Book in 1952 in order to explain or disprove as many reports as possible. It was designed to calm down any panic and protect the public from a serious national security threat. However, behind the scenes, authorities were confronted with a frightening reality. Well-documented UFO encounters involved several trained witnesses, radar data, pictures, ground marks and physical effects on aeroplanes making it difficult to dismiss UFOs as a pseudoscience or insignificant. And how did the Project Blue Book turn out? Major General John Sanford, the Air Force's Director of Intelligence, reported that between 1,000 and 2,000 reports had been evaluated with the majority of them explained. 
a certain percentage have been made by credible observers of relatively incredible things, he confessed. We are now attempting to resolve this group of observations, so even if the outcome was not conclusive, it did accomplish something. For example, astronomer Alan Hynek, a UFO skeptic, converted to a believer after concluding that they were a genuine phenomenon in desperate need of scientific investigation, with hundreds of cases in the Blue Book files still unsolved. He also highlighted that many of the closed cases were settled with odd, often vexing justifications, often offered ironically by Hynek himself. However, it appears that we are getting closer to learning the truth regarding UFOs from official sources. The authorities appear to be far from finished with their UFO investigations. NASA has assembled a first-of-its-kind group of experts, from physics to astrobiology, to explore what the government refers to as an Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, or UAP. The 16-member panel will base its inquiry purely on declassified sightings and other evidence received from civilian, government and commercial sectors. Let us know what you think of UAPs in the comments section below.